Back from St. Martin, I immediately purchased a three-day Coachella weekend one pass with some of my best friends. I'm a huge Billie Eilish fan and we get insanely close for her performance. Check it out. What's up you guys back with another video here with my buddy Matt we did a little day trip today after Coachella I woke up at 11 30 to a text from this dingus saying uh, let's go to the O'Connor Lodge a five-star casino here in Lake Elsinore for really good action five star for poker action and then where, we're, where are we gonna go tonight Matt? Jewelry's still out possibly Ocean's 11 uh, possibly Gardens but uh most likely Ocean's Eleven. So a little two-peat video for you guys. We are currently on the wait list for the 5-5 game in for a thousand dollars. Let's get into the hands. Let's go. If you guys like this video and the uh, last minute effort to get you guys some cool new spots here for the vlog, leave a comment down below and subscribe as always. Let's get into the hands. Let's go. Inside the Econo Lodge, and trust me, the action here makes up for the ambiance. We get into the 5-5 game for $1,000. First hand of the night, I look down at Ace Queen Offsuit, and as a bunch of limps over to the cutoff, he raises it up to $20. I'm in the button, and I 3-bet him to $65. Pretty standard so far, and he puts in the call, leading us to a flop, which gives us two pair. Top two to be exact, Ace Queen 8 with two diamonds. Let's go. The cutoff checks it over to me, and I make a standard c bet here for around half the pot seventy dollars is the price to call which he does he puts in 70 bucks and that brings in the backdoor heart draw the seven of hearts peels off and he checks it over to me for a second time do i check behind here or do i go for some more value my opinion i think it's a no-brainer we have to get value here and charge against any of the draws he could have diamond draws king jack king 10 maybe a hand like queen 10 still want to get value from all of those so I bet out for $120. If he calls here, he's probably gonna have some weak aces along with the draws that I just mentioned. He puts in the call and we're off to the river, hoping for a non-diamond, which is exactly what comes, although it brings in the backdoor heart flush, comes the deuce of hearts. But when he checks to me for a third time, he doesn't have much left in his stack, around $210. So I decide it's all going in the middle here. The whole kahuna, we're taking it down here. He ends up mucking his hand. So we're gonna take down that $530 pot, up almost $300 in the first hand of the night. Feeling pretty good, we look down at jack 10 of spades from the low jack. The player in the plus one raises it up to 15. I make a standard raise here to $45, balancing my range. The opponent puts in the call, so going heads up in position to a flop with just under 100 bucks in the middle. Flop comes queen, nine, four, rainbow. We have a backdoor spade draw and the open-ended straight draw, so when he checks it over to me, I'm not gonna slow down and check here. I'm gonna fire out for $50. We're still behind hands like king and ace high. So I'm gonna fire out 50 bucks here and try to get some of those hands to fold He doesn't oblige though He puts in 50 bucks and that brings in the seven of clubs on the turn We don't pick up any equity a seven of spades would have been a much better card to see Nevertheless, he checks it over to me for a second time I still just have jack high here, but I have a lot of equity in this hand I want to blow him off any of his one pair type of hands along with his ace and king high so I think we need to go for a large bet here and put pressure on any of his one pair type hands. That's what I do, $250 with jack high. Yes, I do bluff sometimes, but I have a lot of equity when I do it. And uh, luckily for us, he gets rid of his hand, so we're gonna take down that $200 pot, two for two on the night. Next hand, we look down at the ladies from the cutoff. Under the gun raises it up to $15, and the player in the plus one position calls. I need to put in a three bet here to get some value and deny some equity to other pocket pairs. Hands like ace king, ace 10, I raise it up to $60. Both the players call though, we're going three ways to the flop, which doesn't give us a set. It comes nine, eight, four, rainbow. I expect the action to check over to me a large portion of the time. 
Instead, Under the Gun bets out for $100 and plus one gets out of the way. Definitely a strange line here from Under the Gun, although I have seen players do this with hands like 6-7, maybe 10-jack, maybe a hand like 10-9, they just don't know where they're at and they want to bet their hand, so I can't get rid of my pocket queens just yet, although we do have a decision of raising here as well, considering he only started the hand with $315. I decide just to rip it in here, get it all in for $255 effective. He has a pair plus a draw or just a naked draw. I want to get the money in now in case he doesn't want to put it in on the turn or river. He does. He puts in the call and we're off to a run out here in a $690 pot. Turn comes a three of hearts followed by the five of clubs. I turn over my hand and he turns over ace deuce of spades. At first I think I win this hand and then I realize he just backed into the wheel. He called my all in on the flop with just a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor nut flush draw. Granted, he only had to call another $155, but still, what is he leading that flop and then calling an all-in with just ace high and some draws? Pretty gnarly run out there. Of course, it goes runner, runner, and we're gonna lose that pot, but lucky for us, we still built up a nice little chip stack and we're up 135 still on the session. And we look down at ace jack offsuit here from late position. Straddles on and I raise it up to $30. We get three callers, so we're going four ways to a flop, which comes jack high, which is great news for us. Jack five, three, rainbow. And the action checks to me, I'm not giving anyone a free card with top top here. I bet out for $50 and I could maybe even size up to like 75 considering there's three other players in the hand. Now we're down to just two other players when early position and late position call. We're off to the turn which seems to be a harmless eight of spades. Early position checks and uh, the action's on me. I bet out for $105. Still just trying to get value from hands like jack 10, queen jack, king jack, or maybe some draws like four six. Either way though, early position and late position both call so our alarm bells are going off in our head now. Probably gonna check on the river for pot control and the river comes a 10 of spades not exactly the best card early position checks it over to me and I know I said I was gonna check for pot control but I have a good hand here and I want to get a little bit more value and I've been experimenting with the 10% river bets here so that's what I do I bet out for $60 into the $585 pot if we get raised, we're in a gross spot and probably can just get rid of our hand. No one's going to fold hands like Queen Jack and King Jack here, so we might get a little bit more value, which seems to be the case when both players just put in the $60. I don't really think they're just going to be calling with two pair. They probably would have raised us. So I confidently turn over my top pair, top kicker. Early position mucks his cards and then late position shows Jack 8 offsuit. So uh, interesting spot here on the river. He probably should have just raised it and got a little bit more value out of me, but Either way, that 10% river bet was either going to get us a little bit more value or save us from facing a larger bet. He probably would have sized up to like two or 300, so I definitely saved some money there and uh, no complaints for me. Speaking of no complaints, I look down at King Kong here and I raise it up to $25. I'm first to act, I'm in under the gun position and when it folds around to late position, he three bets me to $85 music to my ears. Sometimes I'm calling here, but I definitely need to put in the four bet a large portion of the time as well. That's what I decided to do for $225. Opponent thinks about it for a little while, and while he's doing that, I'm praying for a call. We're only behind pocket aces at this point. So when he puts in the call, I'm loving life, and I really like this flop as well. 885 with two diamonds. With 550 in the middle, we have the king of diamonds in our hand as well. I decided to go for around one third the size of the pot for $125. On the flop here, late position does not think about it that long before ripping all in, covering me. It's $555 effective. He has me covered. I'm obviously not folding here with pocket kings and over pair to this board. He still could have queens, jacks, or tens. So I snap call him. If he has aces, so be it. He's going to have to show it to us. The turn comes a seven of spades followed by the four of spades. Really shouldn't change too much. He says ace high. Hi, so I show my cards. I don't want to slow roll a fish at the table here. It's bad for the game. And uh, if he says ace high, I believe him. I turn over my pocket kings and he later tells me he had ace queen offsuit. So uh, yeah, like I said, the action here is definitely better than the ambiance. That being said, that completes the first half of this vlog. We rack up our chips and head to the cage, cashing out a profit of $588. Make sure we don't want to fly any colors here, okay? No colors or weapons, just gotta make that clear. Keep your blue flag in your pocket. No flying colors here. We got into that game for a thousand, out for fifteen fifty-eight. Profit of five fifty-eight. How do we do, Matt? 
uh, plus 705 at the one three table, basically smashed it. Geez, a robbery here at Lake Elsinore. <laughs> we are heading over to the gardens. Gonna continue this little two part here and uh, let's just hop right into the gardens, let's go. A one hour drive is all that separates us from the gardens casino. We make it just in time for sunset and then we arrive right after dusk and we send the drone up, check it out. Walking into the gardens, I've been here two or three times before and it really brings back good memories. I really should play here more often. We get on the list and sit down at the 5-5 game. It's a $600 cap, so that's what we buy in for. First hand of the night, I look down at pocket eights here from the big blind. Early position opens it up to $25. When the action folds around to me, I put in the call and the under the gun limper puts in the call as well. As a side note, probably could just be three betting here and that's probably the best play in the long run. I put in the call and under the gun limper does as well we're off to a flop three ways which comes jack eight five bang we flop middle set and by not three betting we have another player another person to extract value from here the action checks over to early position who bets out for 55 dollars i go for the check rizzo to 125 dollars under the gun quickly gets out of the way no more value from him but early position puts in the call which is great news for us there's a lot of hands to get value from here you could have a hand like 9 10 maybe Maybe a hand with two spades in it, maybe a hand like King Jack, Ace Jack. We're ahead of all those hands and we don't want to see a scary turn card, which kind of comes the queen of clubs bringing in a hand like 9-10, but the front door draw is still just that, a draw, so I decide to bet out for $100 into the $325 pot. Early position snap jams all in for $350, and having a set on this board is pretty good news. If he has a straight, we can still fill up on the river, and we're definitely ahead of most of his semi-bluff, so I snap call. Going off to the river in a $1,000 pot, which comes the king of clubs, not exactly the best card. He turns over top pair in the flop, and he river two pair with king jack offsuit no good sir pocket eights the snowman are gonna take down this thousand dollar pot just like lake elsinore we win the first hand of the night up 355 dollars so far our name finally gets called for the 5-5-10 game and we sit down with another vlogger named Branson Poker. We got out of the 5-5 for 1,062, so a profit of 462 early here at the gardens. Into the 5-5-10 for $800 and just a side note, every 40 minutes when there's a dealer change, it's a mandatory $25 bomb pot. Definitely induces some action and it's part of the game so we have to oblige. I look down at the first hand ace jack of spades from the cutoff. Under the gun limps and I raise it up to $40. We get a call from the button and under the gun. We're going three ways to the flop, which comes jack high. Jack 6-3 with two diamonds. 120 in the middle and the under the gun checks it over to me. In between two opponents, I really like starting with a check here. Even though we could get value from hands like king jack, maybe two diamonds. Got to be balancing the range here. Can't just be checking with draws and missed hands. So I check it over to the button and he bets out for $80. When under the gun just calls and doesn't raise, I think this is a great spot to go for the check raise. I make it $300. Under the gun probably has a draw like 4-5 or diamonds here when he just flat calls the 80. If he had a strong hand like king jack, pocket sixes or pocket threes, on this draw heavy board he most likely would have just raised himself. I'm really only scared of the button. So when I raise it up to $300 and he gets out of the way, that's great news for us because I think he's the stronger of the two opponents in the hand. Under the gun only has around 330 in his stack and he decides to rip it all in. That's not the best news, but he could also be doing this with a draw. 330 is his all in. I put in 300 already, so I only need to toss in 30 more dollars, which I do. We're looking for no diamond, no seven or deuce on the turn. Turn comes one of those cards, the deuce of diamonds, combining both of things we don't want to see. And the river comes the four of clubs, but he didn't need either of those cards. He turns over over pocket sixes so we just flopped a set here lucky for us he didn't have more money in his chip stack and he's gonna take down that eight hundred and sixty dollar pot oh well We 
rebuy for 562 more dollars and we find ourselves in this beauty of the hand midway i look down at ace queen offsuit from late position player on my left posts a 20 dollars fee to come back in mid orbit and the action folds around to me so i open it up to 60 dollars Pretty standard so far and my left puts in the call and the big blind does as well. It's going three ways to the flop here with ace queen offsuit and we flop ourselves Broadway aka the nuts it comes king jack 10. Bang! We flop the nuts. Big blind checks and I decide to bet out here for $85 and the player on my left gets out of the way hoping and praying for a call here from the big blind and our prayers are answered. The big blind puts in the call which brings a blank seven of diamonds in on the turn. When he checks it over to me i decide to size up here for 245 dollars i'm looking to get my stack in by the river he has me covered and i have 800 to start the hand so i decide that 245 dollars is a good bet here on the turn to my surprise he puts in the call so i'm putting him on a hand like jack 10 king jack king 10 maybe a hand like king queen like for a pair and a straight draw he also still could have a heart draw although i do block the nuts having the ace of hearts in my hand so it's less likely he has that and more likely he has a strong hand Hand, especially when he calls my $245 butt we're off to the river hoping and praying it doesn't pair which it doesn't it comes the eight of clubs although it does put a four liner to a straight which makes it a little bit scary for the opponent when he checks it to me nothing for me to do here with the nuts other than rip it all in in his face $460 into the middle and he snap calls me Great news for us, I'm not scared about anything other than a chop would be unfortunate. So I turn over my ace queen offsuit and he turns over eight seven of hearts. Get a gutter to the straight flush on the flop, made a pair on the turn and rivered two pair. He couldn't get away from it. Just like that, we scoop a $1,760 pot. Let's freaking go. After the big hand like that, I reward myself with some steak and shrimp. Pretty great food here at the Gardens Casino. Highly recommend you guys trying out the food options. A little mid-session update here. We got the peppered steak and the shrimp. We're grubbing. It is coming up on like 10 or 11 p.m. right now, and uh, we got five hours of driving in today. We're coming up on like also like five or six hours of playtime. We're doing really good here in this 5510 with the $25 bomb pots, which I don't really like, but it brings action, so that's pretty good. But uh, we're up around $400 after we just flop the nut straight and the guy calls us and then bets 300, then calls our jam on the river. So it's going pretty well so far. Overall, really like the gardens. Talk to some of the floor and maybe we're gonna host a meetup game here. Definitely a cool perk of having a poker vlog and uh, just playing poker for a living is you can just do this. You can go to two casinos in one day, eat some steak and shrimp here at the gardens in Hawaiian Gardens, California. And then tomorrow you could be back in Palm Springs. So who knows? Definitely a fun time, but uh, I'm gonna enjoy my meal here and then catch you guys for that next hand. Let's go. Let's see what this next hand brings in. I looked down at King 10 of clubs from the cutoff. Two limps to me, that's not gonna fly. I raise it up to $50 and the button puts in the call. He's the only player to do so. So when we see a flop of ace seven six with two hearts, I think this is a good board for me. It's gonna have all of my ace king, ace queen type hands. I bet out for $65. That's around half the pot and the button doesn't wanna get away from the hand just yet. He puts in the call which brings in the six of spades, pairing the bottom card. Now normally I'd probably size up here and bet around 200 to $300. But in the moment, I'm not exactly sure what spooked me, but I decide to check here. Button checks behind, so he gives up his position here and gives a free card, which comes the three of clubs. When I give up on the turn, my line doesn't make too much sense. I would have just fired the turn with any of my strong aces. I still could credibly represent kings and queens, but I decide to give up here and check on the three of spades. Button takes the lead now and bets out for $100, and I don't really think he's doing this with just an air ball. Therefore, I shouldn't go into my bag of hero calls here with the king high. I muck my cards and he doesn't show, so uh, I guess we'll never know if we got bluff there. I end up losing a bomb pot, so our $1,700 stack two hands ago is now down to just under $1,300. I look down at pocket nines here from the third blind and under the gun limps. Small blind raises it up to $120 and I do something here that I don't really advocate too often, which is just cold calling a raise. You probably should just be three betting or folding. Pocket nines here is probably strong enough to go for the re-raise, uh, but I just flat call here looking to set mine and uh, we're $1,200 effective. So I wanted to just flop a set here and get into a cooler situation and stack them. Flop comes eight deuce deuce with two diamonds and he checks it over to me. I'm in position, which is another reason I wanted to just flat call him pre. We have an over pair here, and when you think you have the best hand, it's probably best just to go for value. Targeting all of his ace high and king high holdings with a flush draw, 
I bet out for $115. Player thinks about it for a few seconds before putting in the $115 of his own money. And that brings in the four of hearts on the turn. Really only improves him if he has a hand like ace three or ace five, which could definitely be a hand in his holding. He checks it over to me for a second time. Now, when I bet the flop here, do I bet the turn? Probably in the long run, that's gonna be the best move. When he calls me on the flop, he still could be floating me here with ace king high. He could also be floating me here with any of his backdoor draws like diamonds or the wheel. But I decided to check behind here, which I think is a small mistake. Seeing what he does on the river, which comes the king of spades, one of the worst cards because now a lot of his bluffs get there, any of his king high diamonds, or his ace king high just makes a better hand and he knows this and he represents that king to the max bets out for 250 dollars i think about a quarter of the time here we need to be putting in the 250 and bluff catching here but I decide in the moment to make the discipline fold here and let go of my pocket nines. I also have a nine of diamonds in my hand, which doesn't fully eliminate him from having a diamond draw, but it makes it a little bit less likely and a little bit more likely that he's weighted towards his value hands here. We'll never know what he has, but we're stuck $385 on the session. Our buddy Jake from Orange County sees on Instagram that we're at the gardens and he decides to show up and sit at our table. And like any mature degenerate poker player, he decides to pull out the chipcock when he goes all in. And uh, just like that, that wraps up our session. We rack up our chips and head to the cage. That was one fun day. All right, you guys, that wraps up our session here from the gardens and the whole day for that matter. We got out of that game for a loss of 416, but we made 50 bucks because of the 5-5 game we were playing earlier. 553 or 558 at Lake Elsinore, bringing our total to just over $600 in profit in around six hours of play. Not bad for $100 an hour on the day. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, going to two casinos in one with all the drone shots and the friends and all that, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know where you want me to play next. Maybe do another two a day. If you guys enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button if you're new. I appreciate all the support. Good luck on the felt as always, you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.